down to your level. Hey, TVT is it's all positional. And the fact that Cure went into his group and he was like, yeah, I'm going to play Clem because he's really good in the late game and I'm going to avoid that. And it's like, wait a minute, you want to go up in a micro battle? And he actually won. He's actually showcased this event alone that he is able to keep up with some of the absolute fastest. And we're going to get right on into it. Over on Hecate, spawning over the bottom left hand side, representing his new team, Vitality. It is Maru. And in the top right, as the Blue Terran for Team Liquid, he is Cure! This one, this one's lining up to be a great one between these guys. This is very, very arguably the best TBT player in the world against the second best TBT player in the world. They're both so solid. TBT is so volatile these days as well. It's not the old school where you have these lines that cannot be broken. The Raven coming into the mix absolutely put a fall in that side. But now we've got the Cyclone being very, very volatile. The true glass cannon unit just absolutely spicing things up. Yes, it indeed it has. So far for these two, it's spiced it up a little bit better for Maru. Again, the desk pointed out that they've recently played a few times, actually, basically within the last month. The most recently, it was a very convincing 3-0 from Maru. 3-0 actually even doesn't even do it justice. They were short games, they were quick, they were brutal. Now that is because of the style that they were playing, a lot of that Cyclone just burst in, let's get it done. But it also just was so convincing that Maru understands the matchup, understands how to play the new Cyclones, and, and so does Cure, but again, just not as well as Maru. Almost better than everyone else, except this guy. Yeah, I mean, there was a, a certain person on a desk over in Gamers 8 that said, Maru is not known for his TVT, and I spat my tea out of my mouth, Zombie Grub. Absolutely <laughs> spat it. I saw our toast uh... eyes on the desk. They lit up, and it's like, what on earth did you just say? Because Maru, this is the one matchup that, for as long as I can remember, has been the god of this matchup, and rightly so. Like, you can have him on the ropes. The desk said it but he's not dead until he's dead. He's made miraculous comebacks, absolutely insane. He's made 90 supply against 180 supply, look like he's fighting on equal <laughs> equal ground. It's just amazing what this man can do. Yeah, we do have a couple of factory expands going down, but as we see, uh, normality in TVT so far. Okay, a little Reaper battle as well. I do want to clarify, you know, I said, I, I used the wrong word when I was like, Maru's nemesis, because nemesis would mean someone that you really struggle against and always seems to get your number, I suppose. But I meant like the person that seems to you know uh, hit him the hardest and actually get the closest but in the opposite way 100% Maru is Cure's nemesis 100% every time that it feels like Cure is finally going to do the thing Maru is there blocking him from GSLs blocking him from qualifying into certain things blocking him from potentially reaching the grand finals of IEM Katowice so for Cure it would be very much justice fulfilled if you finally beat him at one of the biggest stages possible in this best of five. Maru going for a Cyclone a tad bit faster than Cure in this game. And that is the extent of the differences. Now a Medivac also on the way because Cure's Starport was also slightly ahead. Absolutely. Not too much difference in the build-ups here. Units made, obviously. Oh, oh that's interesting oh, for Vikings okay. early on. I did yeah. not anticipate that because the medevac is so, so hot right now. Is on the <laughs> it is very hot, right? We kind of saw this initially when the Cyclone drop became an issue because it also could have been helpful against that tank drop that was uh, very popular before the patch. But then what happened is that anyone who was using a Cyclone controlled well and basically always caught the Viking in a more vulnerable position. Obviously, if the Viking catches the medevac in midair and there's no drop, then easy that the Viking wins, right? But if it's late to the party, the Cyclones here from Cure, or the Cyclone, singular, sorry, could actually grab a lock onto the Viking. But if you combine everything together for Maru, he should be able to not just offend against this, but even punish it. Absolutely. I actually like the Viking a lot here. It's almost like an anti-Cyclone build that he's gone for. Yes. Right? And Cure, the way that he's turned up here, just one Cyclone in the mix, a bit of a ragtag squad in there. Isn't able to get too much done. Maru has met it as it landed, no damage taken, and he's quicker, far quicker into his tank production and the third CC. Yeah, as soon as I saw that Viking, I was like, okay, he's not really going to be playing a lot of the Cyclone Wars. He is going to be trying to move over into the tank, already sieged up in the natural as Kier looks to try and get some damage done. Yeah, unfortunately, 
one tank is just so freaking effective, especially if you aren't 100% sure what's behind that tank. So not going to be able to dive in there. He could still go for a Cyclone Raven Interference Matrix break, but that does seem to have fallen out of fa uh, favor. Once the Terran sees the other Terran doing the tanks, they're like, oh, we can do that? Okay, then we'll both do that. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Kyor did poke in a little bit, had the Hellion first, so the Cyclones didn't take too much damage, but looks like we're going to get into a good old-fashioned TBT macro game, and Kyor realizing, hey, you're very turtly. You've done something a little bit different. He's going to go for a bit of a leapfrog approach here. Just throw that third on location, and they're both going to be going for bio here, and you see that from the Stim and the extra barracks. You know, hopefully, Kyor's opener, his amount of Cyclones, and his ability to be on this side of the map this entire time would lend itself to an on-location third command center. It can still feel like you're trying to get away with something too greedy because TVT can be really harsh, <laughs> but you absolutely should be able to get away with it. And we do have, I think, here even trying to get a really good read on what is available to snipe off, what might be missing from the composition as well that he has to worry about. So far, he does confirm the presence of Ravens and I believe some of those barracks. So you can pretty much know exactly what each other's doing. Although, actually, I mean, I say that because we know what they're doing, but does Marl have any idea as to what Kira's doing? No, but I was, I was just thinking about that to myself. I'm like, Cure has only shown bio in yeah. TBT so far in the tournament. So he's the one that's like, you know what? I'm a bit more predictable in that sense. Whereas Maru, you saw Cure poking with that meta back, just confirming, do you have extra barracks going on here? What's exactly going on? And they both kind of know what world they're in right now. Upgrade start for both of them. Maru's a little bit faster and obviously did have his third CC quicker. But the fact that he's had to play this defensive huddled up start, Cure has absolutely put a little bit of fear in Maru, and he's going about taking this third very carefully, and that's what you have to do when you see Cyclones from your opponent in that number. Yeah, because Maru really has no idea what Kira is doing exactly. The, there is a possibility that four Cyclones are revealing themselves, but then four or six were still behind those, so it's ten suddenly arriving as your tanks are on siege and your Ravens are out of position. But obviously that's not the case here. Maru probably, yeah, they both know each other very well, and, and including including the now new patch too. So I think the reads have been made. And correctly, Maro actually looking to push out. He does have the, I mean, does he have the tank lead? He should, considering that he went into him faster. I just want to see by how much. No, he actually, he has a second tank. Here already has a third, obviously with the defender's advantage. The difference actually is in the Raven. Maro has a third Raven, Cure only on two. Yeah, I mean, Maru definitely took a little bit of a cut here, right, with the way that he went about his build. These four Cyclones absolutely can get damage done. I mean, they're not going to be useful in this fight Ooh. necessarily, but Cure taking a nice few shots there from his siege tanks on the high ground, and he's getting damage done in this third as well, so I'm going, this is not looking good for Maru. But he is going to go for a big drop in the main, and this could absolutely get some damage done. That combat shield, very <gasps> exposed here, very Ooh. close to finishing, and will it actually get sniped here? This is actually very close and denied 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 oh no and combat shields is kicking in for maru but that's not really the most marines i've ever seen you know the ravens do have some energy but here comes the rest of kira's army trying to take care of this with his own auto turrets coming on through he still has a decent amount of them but actually missed the second auto turret it's a really derpy spell in some ways and now the scvs of cure have to be pulled cure already did damage to maru's economy so him taking 10 scvs is actually not too bad. The more worrisome part is that he's behind by three. Oh, bleh. yeah, we're good there. He's behind by three workers, and now he's also behind by 10 army supplies. So if Maru can keep up the pressure, Cure is going to feel like he is on the ropes. And Maru just took out so many add ons on these buildings, along with that starport as well. So he doesn't have to worry about his opponent having a ton of medivacs or even Vikings to deal with these doom drops that he's continuing here. And Cure, he's now oh. absolutely in the defensive position. And his units are worse as well, Zombie Grub, a lot worse. There is a yeah. tank shooting him from somewhere, but big unloads, big marine surround. Maru has to get on out of there. Oh, what's the medivac that was full? Yeah, that's an empty medivac right there. It's getting all the topsy turvy. You know, there was a really interesting half a second, second there, where, you know, Cure thought, okay, he's going to do it. No, wait, he's not going to do it. And then my missile turrets are going to be done. Oh, he is going to do it. But then he had boost, and Maru didn't. So he actually got to unload, like, this half a second faster. But it really was that tank that was already sieged there. And then the fact that he had more reinforcements that really combined together to make sure that his inf 
inferior army because without those combat shields, his Marines are not impressive, was actually able to hold. And with that hold, Maro has returned all the way back home, and Kier now has time to finally get his starport production up and running. His 2-2 also done. He was good about getting that. And most importantly, those combat shields. Yeah, they're both on top of the upgrades, and now we're 10 minutes into this game. There's five supply between them. Cure suffering a little bit of a supply block here, which is unfortunate, but very close in supply. Cure probably feeling that he took a bit too much damage, so he's looking to deal the damage. Maru did know that there was a squad in the top left, and he's over here. Gonna try and do what he can, but... Cure's very good about positioning his tanks. That's a very bold drop. It's triple medivac going into the main base. First medivac, I mean, it gets to unload a little bit, does get taken down. Then I got at least two medivacs worth of Marines. Now with combat shields as well, ripping through the main base. A very fast response from Maru, however, means that this will be cleaned up and overall just simply wasn't worth it. Cure's supply drops by about 20. It is all action on Maru's side of the map, so Cure might have time to recover, but that just wasn't it. No, that was a one-way ticket. He could not get out of there. Nice interference matrix just to make sure that he stopped the boost on that medevac as well. 2-2 Two -two finished up for both players here. No massive upgrades dwindling. Maru is getting his plus one on his tanks as well. The plus two being very important on tanks because then you can one-shot marines. And right now, Maru, there's nothing to really stop him from moving out besides a huge bunch of tanks on the <gasps> high ground. That was brutal. Nice play by Cure. That was that must have just been prediction, right? Like that was oh I think that was the scan in the top left from Maru. So he saw a scan and he was like, Well, what does that mean for a Terran player? You're probably looking to see what I have to defend. You're gonna go over there. But the army had missed uh, the scan had missed the army and it just positioned itself in such a forward position. I mean, really important stuff, right? Because now kind of officially we've had the rebalancing of the armies. They're both now jockeying for position in the middle of the map as opposed to on each other's bases, hitting their planetaries. Speaking of which, Kier having a fourth base turning into a planetary and Maru's fourth base only just now finishing. Yeah, Kier's definitely taken a leap here in a economy. He's also a tiny bit ahead in his upgrades, but he hasn't gone for those tank upgrades, which absolutely could bite him in later on in the game. And Kier's going full beyond style here by the looks of it. Three more barracks being thrown down, and that is a lot of Marines. Cure feeling like he has to run back, and he will run back into a small squad of Maru, and I say small, it's just way smaller than how many Marines Cure has. I actually wonder if he just knew that was going to happen, right? Like, he might have scanned too much. It's kind of hard to say, because it looked like only one tank, but maybe he knew the rest of the army was there. But then he knew that there was at least some army that had just killed a sensor tower, so he was like, well, I'm going to get something. And he absolutely did. He still has the army in position to scare the fourth base, but the tanks have certainly positioned themselves well. That's not going to get broken without a much bigger committal from Cure. Maru, sneaky, sneaky, sees there's only two tanks defending the third base, drops on top of it, will not... Okay, we'll get that tank. The repair was pretty cool, but one tank does go down, fairly worth it, but Maru actually, I'm wondering why his supply is so far down. He has taken some losses. The Marines on the right side, running into the tanks on that left, and now losing that drop. And he is the one, of course, that wants to make the starport transition. He's looking towards that late game. Yeah, I mean, this, this is Maru in a nutshell. Like, he is behind, but... In TVT especially, defender's advantage is so damn big. Obviously, you can Dune drop into a production line, things like that to really get a cheap win out of it. But beating down these tank lines and these tank wars, this is where Maru shines. He is so efficient. I say that as a scan goes down and he doesn't run oh. Spirit Matrix and that's a huge marine ball on this size zombie grub and the ravens die before they do anything. Unfortunately, that just isn't the beautiful surround that I think Kira had in mind, mostly because of the terrain. It also wasn't the best timed, but the terrain really didn't work with Kira's idea there. I love that he was so, he looked like he was going to go for it because it could have been a cool blitz attack, but probably not worth it. Maru did have more tanks that were repositioning back on that line and Kira probably probably would have been stopped at the very least from entering into the natural. He would have just gotten a lift on the third. So everything calms down for a second, and we really do have an official eight racks, very marine heavy, very momentum heavy, versus three starport as Maro starts to build those air units. This is the better composition oh. if everything goes according to plan, and the eight racks player is trying to make sure that everything doesn't go according to plan. So big old drop from Kira heading into Maro's main base. That's a lot of missile turrets that do greet the drop, and there are there is a tank there, but it's kind of one wondering 
very, very close to these Marines, and this is a lot of eco damage to get done from Cure. This is absolutely what he wants with his momentum-based play here with so many barracks, 16 Marines at a time. Unfortunately, with the Vikings out, this is, as uh, you said, a one-way ticket. <laughs> it's the same situation, but this one did last a little bit longer and do a little bit more damage, and this is a style which you can give away more units if it means that you are taking down some of the important units of the defending Terran like the Viking, like the Liberator, like the tanks, and honestly, even the static defense. The fact that missile turrets on the top left of this base might open opportunities for the future. But you can see Cure Supply telling us that the attacks did not really work. He does nothing else coming up here, and now Maru is like, yeah, those didn't work? I can be on the map now. I got the tanks, I got the Vikings, I got the Liberator. What are you going to do about this? Yeah, Cure, he's got many command centers coming up, so that's where a lot of his money's gone into. And But he does not want to fight this army of Maru right now. I don't know what the tank count is for both these players, but 11 versus 5. Cure has to position so nice, and he's doing that so far, but if Maru gets close to him, he's in a world of trouble. Yeah, exactly. He did run forward and snipe a tank there. That was nice movement. Also trying to get the best possible potential surround with the army on the backside, or run by. I mean, he can actually just go into the third base, which is what he is scanning. Now, only one tank there to defend, so that's going to be a lot of SCV damage, but of course, economic damage on Cure's side of the map. Two bases going down. Third one in Maru's sights. Cure just trying to draw the line here so that the natural is at least safe. They both kill each other's workers. We have Cure, though, losing those command centers. Maru still on five bases. Yeah, I mean, Maru's army is bigger. It really is bigger, and he is shutting down a lot of the eco from Cure. And Cure, I think he's mined out of his main, his natural at this point. He's having to float over to the right side as well. What's the resources lost have at this point? Because I feel that, yeah, Maru's just been trading that bit better here. Maru, if he is caught on siege, is as vulnerable as anyone. The Vikings won't be able to help out too much there, but that's the thing, is that he should be siege. He's got the scans, he's got the idea of how Kier wants to try and wiggle his way out of this, so he's not going to let that happen. Kier basically wants to try and base trade, make things really chaotic, try and get the tanks on siege, the Vikings flying over for Marines, that type of thing, because he is absolutely desperate. His army face value running into Maru's is not going to work, but now it's just locked here as Kira's on a much worse economy. Absolutely, and Maru's really utilizing his air control very nicely, constantly having more vision than his opponents. The medevacs can't stick around and heal these Marines either, and Cure. He's getting himself into a bit of a nasty position here, but is Maru siege in time? It looks like so, but that's like a siege tank flank going on at the south there. Cure doing something over on the far left side of the map as well, but this battle definitely was in favor of Maru. Yeah, absolutely. I think Kier saw the tanks to the right and was like, well, they're going to do some damage, and then my army's going to come up on top, but that didn't really work out, and his tanks being on siege for the majority of it, well, it didn't end up helping too much, but they did at least stop Maru from hitting the third base. Now Kier is once again getting Marines into Tomorrow's third and into the natural, gonna snipe that tank. He only gets one shot off, but another tank behind a couple of factories there. Maru also can slow go it here, right? He knows that his army is better. So patience, time, it's all on his side. He could even sacrifice a third base if he continues to tighten the noose on Kier's side of the map. Absolutely, yeah, you nailed it. You were spot on. The tanks of Maru have just been so much better than the tanks of Cure. Like, those upgrades are really coming in massively in these fights, where Cure's Marines just melt so much faster due to those upgrades. And Maru, if he splits off this base, that base that's freshly made over to that far right side, it's as good as done. Planetary is going to be a surprise here. And the SCVs, though, still get the repair. And, and that's exactly what Kira was trying to stop by just running before attacking. Now, the SCVs do go down, and that is a very good surround, too, mitigating the planetary splash. But it, it, you don't want to spend so much time like this when you're the 8 racks player. Even if you get the kill, it's just so much time and so many Marines. When, again, they are cheap, you don't have that much money. It is purely Marines almost on the defense. Those tanks have to unload somewhere. He's looking for the best possible position. Kira ready to make his possible last stand here in game number one. He's going to go and try and do it. A couple of units on the backside. SCV's being pulled, but the supplies certainly tell the tale. Maru has dominated the end game here and will take the first game in this series. Very, very well handled by Maru. That was not an easy position. You could see that during the mid game there, he was behind. Like a good 170 supply against 200, less SCVs, less barracks, less infrastructure. But this man just does not know how to die. And that is a beautiful talent to have.
Yeah, particularly for TVT, but he managed to show how good it can be in TVZ. We really do blame him for maybe a lot of the complaints about that matchup for a little while. And then even in TVP, I recall him occasionally throwing out even some Battle Cruiser games. But TVT is really, really where it shines. It's already a matchup that naturally feels like it has a lot of comeback potential. And that's exactly what Maru had to do when things got a little sticky with that drop of his, like not exactly doing it. But then Kira, you know, he had a moment it. He did another drop after this that also was like, it's okay, but it's not exactly what you want. He just never really got the one, two, three punch as the eight racks player. A couple of the one twos were okay, but you really need that third gut punch to actually take down the late game Maru. And I mean, at this moment here, it's like, hey, Kyo, he's got map control. He's making so many extra CCs and stuff. And he's throwing away Marines here and there, but you can afford to do that. It's just when it came to the actual army, the actual fights that happened, these Vikings, the Liberator they had in the mix, the Ravens as well that he continued to make, just made such a difference. It yeah. just allowed him to have more fun in the yeah. middle of that map. Like, it really was. Yeah, you really want to be able to trade efficiently with the amount of Marines you get, but then without showing the green light to the opponent, basically. So if it goes okay, and then the Starport player's like, well, I still feel kind of iffy about moving out. I only have six tanks instead of eight. I don't quite have the Vikings. I don't have a Liberator. Then Kira's going to be able to remax and remax and remax and remax. But Kira's attacks up to the point that Maru countered, they just weren't quite good enough. So Maru was like, yeah, of course I can get the uh, map here now. I can get on the map, and I know you're going to try and base trade me, so I'm going to siege up some tanks back at home. It's definitely a practice dance from both sides in that regard. And Cure part of the dance just never really matched up to Maru's. Yeah, it's funny that he really did go into that big marine stuff, and he seemingly had more and had a few good trades where Maru walked into tank fire. Yeah. Where he didn't know the tanks were, but just could not whittle Maru down. Maru just keeping his tank count alive. Yeah. Even though everywhere I looked, things were dying, his army just got so big and out of control, and you really felt like Kior at no point wanted to fight the army, wanted to get the run-by damage done with marines and such, but just wasn't able. Uh, I think it's also very important to note that that plus two was just super on point for the tanks for Maru, who was more dependent on them to help him survive. We do have the second map now up and loaded in the top right for Team Vitality. He is Maru. <laughs> yeah, you can't help but titter. And spotting over in the top left hand side, representing Team Liquid, it is Cure. I feel like that's a that's a true StarCraft nerd right there. They know the cowbell. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All righty, all righty. Solaris will be the second map. Oh, I took sound totally like pig for a second. <laughs> Solaris. Solaris. Cheeky, cheeky <laughs> Solaris. All right, double gas opening going on from both ends and yet again. And this is uh, definitely the opening that a lot of them have been prioritizing thus far in TVT. Mm. It's just the safest. allows you to get those cyclones out as fast as possible. But we did see very different units that they went for in that previous game. Yes, yeah. Kira kind of doing what is now the expected thing, which is a cyclone opener of some type, two or one with a couple of extra units. Maru wanting to directly counter that with a Viking double cyclone. Again, it gets a little tricky just as far as its ability to be in the perfect position every single time, but assuming that it can be and that the micro doesn't go severely wrong, I mean, you also have defense advantage working with you. So it is a powerful anti-cyclone strat in that regard, but then uh, it's not perfect. There's a reason that that just doesn't happen every time. Obviously, if Cure didn't go for that particular drop, then it can also change what the Viking Cyclone opener would do, so on and so forth. But, you know, we did see actually a decent amount of one Rex expands in Maru versus Byun, and I am wondering if that was purely because they know each other so well. It absolutely could be. I mean, they are very close friends. When you see these Korean Terrans hang out, like, you'll see the lone Protoss, because there's only one of them, obviously, in Hero, <laughs> uh, being there. But all the Terrans, they group up, like, and they're all always talking about StarCraft and strategy. You could see, like, I saw before Beyond played Maru. Maru's with him, Bunny's with him, the Cure's with him. They're all talking and chatting and watching replays and stuff. I just found it so cute and funny. But this, we already see slightly different units being made. Maru's gone for two Reaper, a Cyclone, where, uh, or rather, Cure's gone for that. 
excuse me, and Maru on the other side of things, quite a bit more greedy here. Gone for a single Reaper, a single Marine. It's going to be pretty tricky to deal with these Reapers if they arrive right this moment, but a Cyclone will be popping out fairly soon. Yeah, it's just so speedy now without that tech lab. Uh, Reapers go in, they go out, can't explain it, they go back in. SV will not die. And the Cyclone, he knows, will be popping out. So he's not going to lose any Reapers, which can accompany this Cyclone, for instance, and actually get some Micro Wars going. It could be the distraction or the effective uh, backstab. So you do want to keep them alive. And uh, whether or not Kira actually uses them is a different question, obviously. He is going to use them to pair up in the Medivac. So not going to be deterred from doing this opening, even though last game, Mara really tried to shut it down hard. Yeah, he really did try to shut it down hard. and. We're going to see Medivac from both of them. This could be one of those those moments where you get the, uh, in fact, what's it called? Two, two ships in the night sailing past one another or playing defensive. And so far, Maru's been very willing to just play the defensive role, which is how we imagine him. And this game, Cure really honkering on down yeah. on that Cyclone production, going to go into Ravens as well with it. Very standard TVT. Yeah, the thing is, is that Maru was kind of forced to play defensive against what Bion was opening with, because Bion did go for the single Cyclone, right? So that hit faster. So he was like, oh, okay, like, you, you got here first. But then if they both go for two Cyclones and a Medivac, yeah, it might be the two, you know, two drops that are already too committed, so you just try and out multitask each other. We are getting a look at Kira's point of view, so we will see from his point of view if Maru has the units at home or not. Already dealing some damage, lost mining time as well. I gotta imagine at this stage of TBT, yeah. Cure's eyes were also on the mini-map. Look, okay, I know he's also going to do it something or something like it. So the multitasking has begun. Who is going to find more damage? Right now, it is Cure's Cyclones, his army, that are in trouble, of course, as well as those natural SCVs. But this just means that there's more potential for Maru as it goes on. Uh, he's still trying to get his own SCV kills in the main base. I mean, it's all types of topsy-turvy. It's actually even harder to cast if you're only looking at one perspective. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, Right now, I think Kyo's in better shape just from watching his perspective, but maybe that's what he's feeling too. Uh, but right now, both of them, the dust <laughs> does settle. But it has to be said, Maru lost a lot of SCVs there. And are we looking at it? Both lost <laughs> yeah. just as much, 12 and 11 apiece. So carnage on both sides and yeah. things, that, things are reset almost. Oh, but yeah, Raven did okay. die from Cure. Okay, that is the big swing there. Thank you, Mapu, for showing us that. Yeah, the thing is, is that Cure did have his own and defending Cyclones. They seemingly got more injured faster, right? So I was uh, he is very concerned. Supply. Yeah, he is yeah. head of supply, and he is starting up this CC quite a bit faster as well. So already Maru a little bit behind oh. here by the looks of it. Oh, what got you, Zombie Grub? Well, Cure has instilled fear in Amaru's heart. He's getting a bunker. Like, this is something he literally skipped in situations in which I would be like, you know, you're already playing very defensive, nothing's happened, like, almost why not get a bunker? But he did totally fine in the series versus Beyond, so I can't criticize. But now, he is concerned. He knows that this is a hard game to call, first of all, you know, from our perspective, which was one. We didn't know exactly what happened. The dust settles, we finally get the workers tab. Oh, okay, it's even, but Maru doesn't know that. He also could be pretty sure that Kira loves the Cyclone, the mass Cyclone bust on the front lines. And a bunker does help you. It doesn't last long, but the extra seconds it might give you can be a life or death difference. Absolutely, Maru with a little bit of a smirk here, realizing that it's not the greatest situation in the world for him. And he has no idea what's potentially at his front door here. That one tank has a massive job to do, but this bunker, absolutely throws a spanner in the works for Cure, because he has no idea what's in it. If it's four Marines, they actually do quite good against his Cyclones, and it's going to be suicide going in there. But yeah. still, such a nuisance with this medevac, constantly saving his boost for when he sees Maru coming. Yeah, and Maru's probably getting really annoyed by that, you know? As soon as one Cyclone locks on for one shot, that thing is dead. And that bunker also kind of ensures, or well, it would hopefully ensure, if this didn't happen, that the tank gets shots, plural. But when you are Matrix, well, that doesn't exist. No shots coming out of the Cyclones from that tank, and the tank even getting a lock-on, actually moving out of range. The Raven is now what goes down. So the tank is gonna be able to help. That thing two shots the Cyclones, all right? So if it is involved, the Cyclones are going to be very hesitant to actually push in. But the Matrix came through. Maru didn't have his Cyclones to try and at least stop the one Raven even. Yeah, I don't think he actually could have stopped the Matrix, to be honest, but yeah, he couldn't. And so he has to pull SCVs, he loses 12, and things are really getting dicey now for Maru. 
really bad. Like, he's 20 supply behind, a good 15 SCVs behind. He's going to try and make matters better for himself with this Raven uh, at counterattack. And I mean, it will deal a lot of damage. It can't not deal damage. You see that? The SCV count is starting to fall, and yet again, it's just... What else is happening on the map here? Cure's got units out on the map, but he's got nothing. This is so much lost mining time. <laughs> this is a lot of lost mining time, a lot of lost SCVs, and yet it might not be enough. Even if the Ravens get away, which would just be freaking amazing. But it might not be enough. Just because Kira has his third on location, he still has two more workers than Maru. He has faster stim by uh, so much. He's already working on combat shields. And, well, he, I guess he could always try and do the same thing, right? And even get farther ahead. Because, actually, at this point, he is finally dipping below uh, Maru's SEV count. But he had that lead for so long that, again, it just isn't enough for Maru. How many workers have died this game? Let's 50. have a you think 50? Well, like 100 in total. Them? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I, I mean, okay, 35 apiece. Dead, <laughs> dead even. The resources lost tab overall very close as well. And I mean, Maru with his Ravens, I think he utilized those turrets quite a lot better. Oh. He was better in position to deal with Cure's turrets as well. So yeah. absolutely, Maru clawing his way back into still the fetal position to some extent, but in the game nonetheless. <laughs> Still have them in the recovery position. You haven't handed them the aspirin in the water yet. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, because it's just so much was already invested into because of Cure's position that was superior at that time. So he has the investments now paying off. Combat shields might even finish for an upcoming, well, definitely be finished for an upcoming battle, but whether it is or isn't for Maru is now the question. Double drop from Cure trying to head into the main base. Uh, this time around, the Cyclones are not there to help out, so that will get a couple of SCVs. Probably the ones that weren't mining anyway, I guess, but oh, a tank is here too so that's going to be a really troublesome little spot to deal with maru once again trying to get some damage with his auto turrets and he'll find a little but he still took more damage to this drop and this seemingly cannot chase it down yeah Ma oh, cure is not taking his foot off the pedal at any point in this game he is all about the go 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 and he's getting a lot of damage done. he also has combat shields against very late combat shields from maru third on location as well he's pumping out the scvs and if he can keep Maru at home, which he's doing a good job of, he's going to be looking phenomenal. And this <laughs> Liberator, I don't know how many kills he's got over here, but the little dance, <laughs> the little Marines do get it in the end. I mean, I think it got quite a bit of damage done. 11 SCVs do go down again, but it's mainly been about these Ravens, hasn't it? Yeah, um, I've, I feel like those oh. are auto turrets. And, oh, well, okay, big drop into the main base. Maru still trying to claw his way back down 14 workers about to be down a whole heck of a lot more and that army is possibly the worst position literal middle of the map it can't return home to deal with this but it also is going to kind of reveal yeah cure guesses this is happening he already has a tank on the high ground that liberator actually saw that so maru knows he can't just blitz on top of the production he's gonna have to settle for the natural and then work his way to the main base and we'll see what happens in a very legitimate base and oh the ravens are here they take out both tanks actually he will run upward get that one tank get the second one as well and that is Kier's production defense now gone he does lose the orbital as well and if a Terran is camped on his production anything can happen for the attacker I mean they're both camping each other's production right but this oh he has to kill his own engineer base to get out of there because he's so <laughs> damn stuck I think this is going to go terribly for Kier and look at that he's wrapping around with everything he has SCVs from every base oh my ball. gosh your supply is absolutely plummeting and you see it in his face gg maru takes what looked like a really bad position i don't know how he does it that is amazing and you know one of the critical differences of some of the other tvts where the base trades were you know maybe easier to call or it got less scrappy is that maru did all that damage with the ravens and saved them. They came in clutch at the final. If two tanks had nothing to take care of them, you had to go through that one little spot where the supply depot was supposed to be. That is so much less army that Maru has to, to work with. Maybe he still busts up because Cure really was found in the worst position. Those Marines trapped behind the mineral line, unable to coordinate with anything else, really was a huge problem as well. I mean, Maru, he's the king of comebacks. This one seemed like it wasn't going to be possible, but he does it. He always does it. He always does. Like, just when you lose hope, you're like, ah, oh, it's this time, right? It's like, no, no, no. He finds a way to win. Like, you look at this situation, very similar army sizes. And I mean, his main base is getting camped, but he was kind of cleaning it up at the same time. And then this, 
I mean, the SUVs, I've never seen so much marching to death before. All these tanks perfectly placed. Even the Ravens coming in clutch and yet again. And wow, what yeah. a game. What a game. If Cure had evacuated the Marines and the SUVs, I guess, too, why not, into the main base so he had... Protection for the two tanks, first of all, because I don't think Maru would have sniped them with the uh, limited number of Marines he sent up there. Then you have the two tanks, and that was like 30 Marines, I want to say. You hold the high ground. Then maybe you have a little supply, you have a little bank, you continue building as much as possible, and you just get into that real base race scenario. I'm kind of on top of your production, Maru, but you're not on mine. Let's see how that goes. But I think he just thought he was going to hold a natural or something. I don't know why his Marines didn't go up to the main base. But obviously that ended up being a uh, crucial part of why he could not break out. And now we are possibly on the last map of the series. In the top left of Golden Aura, up two to zero, he is Team Vitality's Maru. One map away from defeat. He has to win every game from this point forward to stand any sort of a chance. It is Team Liquid's Cure. Man, what a rough position to be in. Like, no mistakes anymore. No mistakes whatsoever. Like, and TVT, it is so volatile. Like, at any point in time, Maru can whip out a weird build, like Proxy 2 racks on the map, you know, where you have one barracks at home, one map on the map as well. They're all very killer builds. And I mean, Cure has been opening up very safe, and he's doing it again, the double gas opening. And this time, Maru may be feeling like he can be a little extra risky this game, given that he technically has two more lifelines. Yeah, and he actually has been one racks expanding with an SUV scout. Uh, again, that was versus Beyond, so maybe that was an only Beyond thing, but apparently wanting to do it here on Golden War for game number three. So if it was a two racks from Cure, like legit both proxy two racks, oh, they're both SUV scouting, then he would be able to change his build in the nick of time and probably defend, considering the micro we see from these guys nowadays. But we also have Cure SCV scouting, and that is a little more interesting, even though kind of in general SCV scouts don't happen in this matchup because he's already choosing a safe build. So I think what he thought is Maru could absolutely proxy two Rex me at a game, you know, series ending game, right? And the way that you 100% set yourself up for the defense is factory expand and SCV scout. That's the thing, like, Cure has to play safe from this point on. Like, you can technically say, no, 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 he can play risky from now. One map away, Maru's the one that can take the chances right now. And you're against a guy that is absolutely synonymous with two raxing people, especially Still. in TVT. Like, he's come down to game seven and done that kind of stuff yeah. to win championships. Absolutely one of the scariest players to go up against. Here he's gone for a Reaper with Marine follow-ups and Cure with an SUV on the Ooh. other side of the map. Wonder if he's just keep... I mean, I think he's going to proxy with it, right? But Heck yeah. that's kind of crazy already. I, mean, <laughs> I like it. I like it. Considering that Maru could absolutely proxy two Rax to end the game, even though he hasn't done that so much recently, I do like the factory expand SCV scout, but then to try and throw at least a little bit of risk into it, not just be meek and let Maru run away with the game, something proxied would be awesome. Is it going to be... I mean, he had the money for a starport, but it's then he prioritized uh, Cyclone. So yeah, it is going to be a starport. And then what do you end up using for the proxy? I mean, either way, he could go for a distraction and the Cyclone's at the front. There's no ramp on Golden Ore for the natural, so that could work out. So a Liberator, a Raven, a Medivac even, like anything could be a distraction or a help on the front lines as well. Absolutely. Like, yeah, getting Medivacs out there, he knows he's going to have more Cyclones about. So if he... If he's thinking like, hey, is there going to be a bunker at the front? Just bypasses that entirely. This Reaper is spotted and removed from the map immediately. And Mara's the one that's like, you know what? Oh, okay, a little bit indecisive there. It was like, Medivac, oh, do I want it? I'll get a tech lab. Let's catch up here, get some Ravens out. And it's a Liberator here, Zombie Web. I mean, yeah. I really like the choice. Yeah. You know, and that's going to be the distraction. It could either do the damage or it could let the Cyclones do the damage. Uh, seemingly, <laughs> no loose scenario, as Maru's only going to have a limited number of units at that at this point, very tech-heavy right now. 
And of course, he has no idea that this is Cure's plan. The fact that a Liberator shows up at all with the amount of Cyclones presented in these TVTs is already a little surprising at this stage, but of course, Proxied, even more surprising. Arrow's so greedy, by the way, so greedy. This is no bunker at the front at all. Going for a Raven as well, which I, I, I'm very worried for Maru. Very worried for Maru. This is exactly the kind of build that technically should be pretty good against what he's doing, but yeah. you're so damn hesitant about really going in here. Maybe maybe he just wants to sync up with his Liberator. Now's the time that he can really shine, and SCVs start falling in the main base. We're going to start looking at Maru's camera here, because I don't think he was at all expecting this Liberator to show up even remotely as quick as it did, but Cyclone's a pretty good unit. Yeah, the thing is, is that... At the end of the day, what you can do against the Liberator is just pull away, obviously, if you see it fast enough. But you can pull away, say, I'll get to that later, and then you can focus on the front lines. I oh, actually no. wonder, as we see Cure not really able to start the snowball, like it's getting close, but it's not quite there. I wonder if Cure could have focused on the front attack faster, not waited for the Liberator, and actually caught Maru in that four to two situation. That's I, literally what it was. Yeah, I was I was incredibly worried for Maru. I was like, he's gonna lose a lot of this natural, a lot in the main, and it's gonna be mech from Cure as a follow-up. He is all about the Cyclones this game, isn't he? And it's going to be a fast tech lab. I imagine it's going to be for speed very quickly, realizing that he's got Maru again in that uh, fetal position here. And he's just he's just able to keep on dealing damage. Cure's been so good about just doing this to Maru, and it's very difficult. Yeah. Amaro now has a decent number of units as well, so getting to split them up and still feel protected on both sides is getting a little bit easier as time goes on. He knows about the medevac, he knows about the front. He doesn't know what Cure is doing. Now, he'll have to get around to that scout later. As you see, he doesn't really have anything to do it. Setting his Ravens out at this particular time would be way too risky, but they actually might be the scout that he gets, is the eventual Raven run by on the fact, oh, okay, he actually scans, which I think is good, but once I confirm that it is mech, Liberator actually moved to the front, so now it's helping the Cyclones, and actually Maru thinks that he can break it. That is just confidence right there. Easy peasy, no problem. What even was it? Yeah, he didn't even think about that, did he? He just jumped on it. He's still defending against this medevac, which is now accompanied. Oh my goodness, okay. Maru's actually cleaning this up so damn nicely. We're looking at his per first person perspective. Changes oh. the barracks into oh. factories. Whoa, this is a spicy TVT here. This actually happened in Atlanta, though. It's kind of surprising. But that was also a situation in which Cure had a... Uh, that came the medevac was weird. I guess maybe it was looking to pick something up, but that just died. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looked like it was going over to kiss Maru's medevacs, and it's like, oh, wait, they're not mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but regardless, um, Maru had fallen behind in that game. Like, the Cyclones of Cure were actually doing a really great job of finding the damage and finding the momentum, and Maru was like, okay, fine, whatever, man. I'm going to play this. I think it was game three after they had already kind of tussled a little bit. I believe Kira eventually ended up winning that one. But yeah, this in this case, it is different. Very important that Kira also scan to confirm the main base. He will see that it is indeed factory versus factory. We've been worried about it. And let's be real, worried is the right word about this style of TVT throughout the entire tournament. We've not seen it, but here it is. Mass Cyclone versus Mass Cyclone. But I guess the question now is, can Cure survive enough to even show us his? I mean, there's no Ravens on the map for Cure. That is such a deficit for him. And I mean, Maru is going to be building units extremely slowly in his main base. And right now, this is full-blown chaos. Cyclones are in his main base, so they are dealing some good damage. The lock on the Raven actually slows down the DPS on the other Cyclones, and Maru's handling this beautifully. You can see Cure shaking his head, not feeling good about the situation. He's against so many turrets here, Zombie Grub. I think Maru is working his way to the finals here, absolutely slapping Cure aside, and he's saving so much energy for turrets. Cure's on his last breath here. The turrets are so instrumental to making sure you can get rid of the SCVs, otherwise the lock-ons are wasted on them. The auto turrets are coming down, killing the rest of Cure's economy. Cure at 15 SCVs is going to be in the gutter economy-wise. Even if he does end up holding, his only hope is to immediately counterattack, hopefully get Maru's third base lifted, and then contain him on a natural. But that is extremely unlikely. We're in Cyclone versus Cyclone. It is literally a numbers game, and Cure just cannot afford as many after this round of cyclones it should be vastly different on the production tab absolutely i mean cures in 
as Kevin would say, all sorts of trouble. He is not looking good for him. And if this was any other game without his life on the line, you can bet your ass he would be out of here. But he's going to try moving a group of Cyclones across the map with a single tank. But, oh my goodness. I mean, even in the hands of God himself, I don't know what he could get done against the army that Maru has. Ravens are out, Interference Matrix go down, and Cure sees a fully fledged army, way bigger than anything he can muster. He's, he would have to find Maru just constantly out of position. <laughs> That's the only way this would work. The issue of the tank was nice, but with five Ravens still working on Raven production as well, by the way, no amount of like sneaking in tanks is going to be enough. You need tanks. You need 20 or plus, right? That's just not going to happen. But of course, Cure is not going to give up. If there's even 5% of a chance that he can bring this game back and continue his life in IEM Katowice, he is going to try it for it. But Maru should know that this is going to be a kind of simple game. Maybe not easy, but simple. Cyclone v. Cyclone, he wins, especially with the Raven. Anything else, base race like that, okay, maybe he gets a little weird. And a Liberator in the main of Cure is killing at least eight SUVs. That's nice, but there's still a almost 20 20 SEV difference. It's nice, it's nice, but he still has a whole mountain to climb. It's like when you climb an Everest and you get to the first flag, you're like, yeah, I'm doing great, but no, you have to go the whole way up. And here, these fights are not necessarily going in his favor. Does turn around though, does have more Cyclones, and fighting on that ramp's actually not bad for those Ravens, or for his Cyclones, because the Ravens can't plant the turrets there. Yeah, there's one thing that Kira got way faster than Maru, and it was the Hurricane Thrusters. Unfortunately, they didn't end up really pushing any oy, of the engagements. Well, the Ravens found out a position one almost to getting sniped. Okay, okay. I mean, Kira is at the very least making himself a believer. Every time he does something like this, he's like, you know what, maybe. And I tell you what, this is looking far better than that 40 supply against 80 that we saw not too long ago. Hey, if he believes, he believes. And right now, he's actually making a lot out of very little. It's just when Maru chooses to go, uh, I mean, these Ravens are definitely a thorn in his side. They're great at the defending. It's very hard for Mario to push out, though, against what Cure has. And Liberator, number five or six or something at this point, he's actually slowing down Maru a hell of a lot. This would be one of the most epic comebacks of all time. I think like, this would be amazing. High ground, not even really a factor here for Cure as he tries to take it. The push has finally come to shove and Maru just has more. A Liberator killing SEVs will not be enough. And Maru will finally make a date with Destiny, make a date with Cyril, a best of seven. I am Katowice, grand finals is going to be Cyril versus Maru. The grand final we've all hoped for, the grand final that we've been looking at, hoping for since 2018 in a major tournament, and it's going to happen here at the Katowice Grand Final.